Hello again, everybody. So uh, where are we at? Well, we just started talking about antiderivatives. And in the last video, we developed uh, this set of rules. And so these are really like our building block rules, right? This is equivalent to, I mean, it really is equivalent to if you look back at, at maybe what you studied in differential calculus, uh, you learn things like the power rule, about the exponential, um, uh, some of the trig stuff are, are some of the basic ones, and then we start combining them. And we're at that stage. We've got the basic ones. We're going to combine these. Eventually, we'll get to things that are equivalent to stuff like the product rule and the quotient rule and the chain rule, except things get a bit complicated when we're coming from this direction. Um, so not to, I don't want to get too far ahead. So let's just do a, a few examples of how we can use these rules. In the last video, I did just a, a straightforward polynomial. Um, let's do uh, something a little bit more tricky. Uh, so remember, let me maybe make that a bit thicker. Remember, we have um, this new symbol really stolen from our definite integral that we call the indefinite integral, which we use as an antiderivative symbol with, of course, the dx at the end. Uh, so I'm going to let's take the antiderivative. Let's try one fourth uh, square root of x um, minus five x to the negative two. Uh, plus 3e to the x dx. Okay, so here's a here's a somewhat of an ugly looking um, uh, function. So the first thing I want to do is just take a look at this function and notice that I've got a radical here, uh, the square root of x, um, and we don't have any rules about radicals. But what we do need to remember is we have a power rule for, for exponents and this radical can really be written as x to the 1 half minus uh, 5x to the negative 2 plus 3e to the x dx. So there I'm doing no calculus, just some basic algebra to remember that that's actually an exponent. Uh, now we're going to start applying these rules. And I've numbered them. There's no, this is not some universal numbering system. I just numbered them in the order I happen to do them so I can refer to them. I'm going to use number rule two here first to split this into several antiderivatives. Right, so number two is the rule that says that when we are adding and subtracting functions, uh, and we're taking the antiderivative of functions that we're adding and subtracting, we can eat, do each one separately. I'm going to use the, the first rule that says constants can slide out front. Uh, let's see. And plus three e to the x dx. Okay. So the constant stays here, the one fourth. X to the one half. We're going to look at rule number four when we have a power and the power is not negative one, and one half is definitely not negative one. I take my value, uh, I take the exponent, I add one to it. So one half plus one gives me three halves. And then I divide by three halves. Since it's a fraction, it's easier to just think about multiplying by the reciprocal. So two thirds. Uh, then let's do this one, x to the, uh, x to the negative 2 is also, the power is not negative 1, so I add 1 to negative 2. I'm going to get x to the negative 1, and then I have to divide by that power. So that was also rule number 4. Both of those I was using rule number 4. And then e to the x is its own antiderivative, and the anti, so the antiderivative, the 3 is still there. I get e to the x. And then I need to put my constant of integration, OK? We don't need one for all three of them. When we put them back together, if there were three, or three constants of integration, there are three arbitrary numbers added together is just one arbitrary number. So we're kind of collecting all of them into one here. Let's do a little simplification. Uh, we can make this 1 6 x to the 3 halves. Uh, we got a negative 1 and a negative up there, so I'm going to get plus 5x to the negative 1 um, 
plus 3e to the x plus c. And so this is what we're saying is the antiderivative of the original function. Let's give it a try. Uh, let's check it. It's always good to check our work. So I've got 1 sixth x to the 3 halves plus 5 x to the negative 1 plus 3 e to the x plus c. So we do the derivative uh, of 1 sixth x to the 3 halves. We get 3 halves times 1 sixth x to the 1 half. Uh, the negative 1 comes down, so I get a minus 5, and I subtract 1, I get negative 2. 3e e to the x stays the same, and the constant goes away. I can simplify this a little bit, uh, and I'll get uh, 1 fourth x to the 1 half minus 5x to the negative 2 plus 3e e to the x. Okay, And that's the function we started with. We could write that 1 half power as a radical, and that's it. Um, and again, this stuff, it's, it's, it's going to be troublesome in the beginning to go back and forth between derivatives and antiderivatives. You're going to go the wrong way a whole bunch of times. You just have to practice. And at the end of it, the antiderivative, you take its derivative, see if you get the integrand, the thing that you started with in there. Okay. Um, all right. Let's do, uh, let's do another one. So let's take the antiderivative of sine of x minus cosine of x dx. And so I will get, uh, first I'll apply rule two, split this into two antiderivatives. And this one's pretty straightforward. I just have to refer to my list. The antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine of x. The antiderivative of, sin, of cosine of x is sine of x, but I've got that negative out front. And I have plus c. And that's it. I'm going to leave this one for you to check um, so we can do a couple of more, couple more examples here. Um, OK, let's see. Let's scroll down a little bit and maybe let me try something here, see if I can do this correctly. I'm going to try to move these down with me. All right, let's just go down a little ways, let's see what happens here. All right, looks like that works, no problem. Maybe we come down a little more. So we still have our rules. Okay. And Oops. Let's, oh, this is nice. All right, here we go. So let's try one more. And let's do uh, the antiderivative x to the negative 1, x to the power of e minus uh, the cube root of x dx. All right. I'm going to do something wrong. All right. So I'm going to make a mistake in here and I want to be very clear about where the mistake is once we see what happens. So first of all, I might remember what happened in the last or two problems ago and I needed to rewrite this as a that, that radical as an exponent. Great. And now I look and I see, oh, look, I've got an x to the negative one. I know what that antiderivative is. That's the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then I've got x to the e. Well, that's, that e is just a number. So this is a power rule. I'd have x to the e plus 1 over e plus 1 minus, and then I have a power rule here, number, number 4 in both cases. 1 third plus 1 is 4 thirds. And I'm dividing by 4 thirds. OK. That seems really straightforward. However, it's not correct at all. So let's try to take the derivative of what we just did. I can maybe simplify a little bit. Um, nothing to do there. This I can write as 3 fourths x, oops, x to the 4 thirds. 
if I take the derivative of this thing, I have to use the product rule. I take the derivative of natural log, I get one over x. I leave this thing alone. Then I leave the natural log alone and I take the derivative of what's in the parentheses and I'll get x to the e minus uh, x to the one third, right? This is not what we started with, okay? This is not what we started with. There's, this is wrong. Here's the problem. At this step, when I decided, oh, I have a rule that tells me what to do when I have x to the negative one, the antiderivative is natural log of x. I can't apply this rule here, right? Rule number five tells me that when I have x to the negative one, when I take the antiderivative of x to the negative one dx, I get natural log of x. And it only tells me that. I do not have that. It doesn't tell me what to do if there's a function next to it, okay? Rules in math are really, really, really hyper-specific, okay? And so if I, if I tell you that when you have x to the negative one by itself and you take the antiderivative, you get the natural log of x, that does not mean that anytime you see x to the negative one and are taking the antiderivative, that's what you do. You only get to do it if you're looking at this, right? But these two things are not the same, okay? We also don't have any rule, right? Really what's happening is here is you have two functions next to each other and we tried to do this. We tried to take the derivative are the antiderivative of each one separately and multiply them together. But this is not a rule. It doesn't work this way, okay? So that's not going to work for us. So we've got to get rid of all this work. This was all wrong. So let's try something else, okay? So there's a pretty simple solution to this. When the thing we're looking at doesn't show up isn't, isn't really workable by the rules that we have. But what we can do, actually, I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep all that stuff there and just scroll down so that I have a nice record of this. So let's just start this one over. What I can do is a little algebra first. Paste, move this down. All right, so I can do a little bit of algebra inside here, right? I'm not taking the antiderivative, I'm just rewriting the integrand in a different form in an equivalent, as an equivalent function. So x to the negative one, I'm just gonna distribute the x to the negative one. And at the same time, I'm going to rewrite the cube root of x with a exponent. This is completely okay to do. We know algebra. This is how exponents and multiplication and subtraction work. We can distribute. Now, I can simply add these exponents. That's my rules of exponents. So I get negative one plus e or e minus one. Same thing here, negative one plus one third is negative two thirds. And now I can apply my rules because now I have the subtraction, the difference of two functions, and I have a rule that tells me exactly what to do with this. Right, and now that I've split them up, I have a power rule, number four up there, the rule about what to do with exponents. With each of these, I can apply that rule because I have exactly what the rule says, right? That rule says if I have x to the n dx, where x is not negative one, then I can write this is equal to x to the n plus one over n plus one plus c. And each of these is exactly in this form. It's an exponent that's not negative one. So the antiderivative of x to the e minus one, I take x to the e minus one plus one, just leaves me with e, and I have to divide by that. Here, I'm gonna get x to the negative two thirds plus one is one third, and I'm dividing by one third, or multiplying by three. And then I add my constant of integration. Okay, um, all right, that's it. Um, again, I'm not gonna take the time right now to check 
to check this, uh, that this derivative, uh, that this is actually the antiderivative. I think it's a good exercise, especially if it's been a little while since you were in Calc 1. Take the derivative of this, see that you get back what you have here. Though you should note when you take this derivative, it's going to look like this. And you might have to do some algebra to prove to yourself that these two things are equivalent. Okay, so just be aware of that. This will be something we encounter. It is always correct. If you do it correctly, when you take the derivative, you'll get, uh, if you take the derivative of the antiderivative, you'll get back what you started with. However, sometimes it might look a little different because uh, it's written in a different way, right? Depending on how things work out. So we need to be a little bit aware of that. Um, all right, that is it for this one. Thanks everybody. I will see you next time.